Hello world, and welcome back to Comment Blocks. For those of you who might just be watching this series for the first time, all you need to know is that you can comment down in the comments below for what block I'll receive in this chest for the next episode. This episode will not be featuring any block in the chest because I've already filmed the episode and then lost the footage. I don't know how I lost the footage, I probably just deleted it or maybe it had some kind of mistake recording. I don't know, Filmora acts funny sometimes, especially with all the updates. But here's what I got. I got moss. I just made myself a little mossy area. I was going to terraform the entire place, but when I realized it needed bone meal, couldn't do it. The good thing about moss, though, is it gave me seeds, which means I had wheat. And of course, I already had llamas from my interactions with the wandering trader, so that meant I could breed them. This breeding pen's a little odd because I had to quickly learn the mechanics of how they work. If you don't ride a llama, they're treated kind of like a neutral, hostile mob, and they will despawn if you get too far away from them or if you wait too much time. That means whenever you breed the llamas that you've already tamed, you have to quickly sort out which ones need to be tamed and which ones don't need to be tamed. As soon as they grow up into adults, you can kill them for leather, which I've been dyeing white in order to make it look like iron armor. It's also the only dye color I have. So, with that being said, if I don't have a comment from the last video to use in this video, what will I be doing? Well, the moss project was pretty boring. It was just me constantly grinding for a farm running back and forth and using whatever bone meal I could make from the moss and then so on and so forth. So what I think I'll do this time is I've set up some chests way off in the distance that are filled with bamboo blocks. And I'm going to use those bamboo blocks to build a mob farm to hopefully get some iron because I want water. Anyone who saw my previous logistic video on Minecraft will recognize this as the push method push a large abundance of materials forward so that you can use them in the project. In this case, I'm using these bamboo blocks because they generate so quickly and I have that huge bamboo thicket. This is every single bamboo block I have. There are none left in the production area. Which means a lot of this will have to be carted back when I'm done. There's no way I'm going to use it all. But let's make a mob farm that somehow operates without a water collection system and figure out if I can sort out only the zombies. Is it possible? I don't know. Am I going to try it? Yes. Last time I tried the Comet Block series, I messed everything up and had to restart. That didn't discourage me, there were some things I wanted to fix, mainly the dirt floor so that mobs could actually spawn and be an opposing threat to me, and believe me, they have been. But also, this time I'm going to make the mob farm that gets me the iron the same mob farm that will eventually be upgraded to water. Uh, last time I used a bunker system similar to what I do in the nether, and this time I'm going to use your typical uh, spawn on platform and drop mob farm. I think that this means that the mobs spawning at the very tippy top of the platform are just going to die on impact, which is going to lower my iron yield potential, but it does mean that I can just modify this mob farm with water when I get the water. I think I have the height right. I'm pretty certain that mobs falling from the lowest floor should survive with most of their health intact. I want that because I want the mobs above them to survive with less of their health intact, and of course the mobs at the very tippy top are just going to die on impact, which means no possible iron production, which is a shame. But I think I have the shape right. All I have to do is duplicate this shape multiple times, and it's raining, which means that mobs are now spawning which is not good for me. Also, thunder and lightning, not good for this wooden structure. I should probably go take a nappy nap and make the rain stop. First, we will YouTube compliant word these guys in order for me to be able to sleep without something nibbling on me. And then we shall take a nap in the rain. You know you're getting old when the idea of taking a nap in the rain sounds awesome.
Behold my creation. I don't know if it's 100% the best possible mob farm I can make under these conditions, but I know it's going to be a good one and I'm quite proud of it. Uh, for those of you who don't understand the way I make my mob farms, my mob farms operate on a spider spawner in the middle of the mob farm. This is the only place where spiders can reasonably spawn. There's then trap doors and a three block gap to make certain that the spiders fall. And if they do manage to make it over, there are multiple rings to stop them and cause them to fall down. The outside rings are where skeletons and zombies, witches, things like that can spawn, creepers. And none of the spacing is proper for spawning endermen because the chill chamber is probably going to feature water conveying them into a certain location. So I just don't allow the endermen to spawn in at all. If I could really get this thing going, I would put a heart of the sea somewhere near it. But unfortunately, I'll have to wait for a comment to allow me to have both Hearts of the Sea and Prismarine. The reason I use Hearts of the Sea is to clear out any mobs that could potentially get stuck like spiders. If, they're, if it's even possible for them to get stuck, I go ahead and I use a Heart of the Sea to make them die while they're in the mob farm. And that makes the most efficient mob farm that I've ever had in my world, is just clearing out and spawning mobs as quickly as possible. Also, the lack of the increased surface area of edge space really helps out in getting the mobs to fall down reliably. Well, let's go ahead and build every single layer of this thing off camera so that I don't have to force you to watch hours and hours of footage. I gotta say, it's looking good. It's looking real good. As soon as I put the roof on, there'll be no going back. Mobs will just start spawning and they'll drop down below. So I think I'm gonna fence off their dropping area and figure out some kind of way of attracting the attention of zombies. Zombies have the largest range of sight of any mob in Minecraft, so they should just walk over to me. I might be able to just make a little fenced in area and hopefully that will filter out all the skeletons and creepers. I really don't want this entire area just blown to bits. Right here I'm experimenting with a filter design. The idea being that I need to slow down the mobs and prevent them from being able to get me while I run away and gather myself back up. But I do want them to get through here at a very slow rate so that I can sort out the zombies. This filter ends up failing fantastically as it just doesn't address the creeper problem. I come up with something a lot simpler and a lot more effective later, but for now, this is the filter. Before I go put on the roof and fire up the mob farm, I want to go ahead and put an end to these illagers that are just walking around my world because I hear with this newest update, something has changed about their mechanic. If I could just get one of them to YouTube safe word already. Did it, did it drop the thing? It did! A bad omen bottle. So it's no longer a passive effect that'll just affect me all the time. I have to drink it. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. I wonder what kind of effects this will have if you like drink it in the end or drink it in the nether or drink it in various structures. Well, they'll probably code that in later, who knows. Either way, it's cool, but let's put on the roof. Giant mob farms, especially in super flat worlds like this one, are kind of like nuclear reactors. Once you assemble them, there's no going back. They'll just keep on producing mobs no matter what. So you really want to make sure you're ready before sticking the roof on this thing. The only way to get it to stop is to come up here and reduce the reaction by taking the roof off very skillfully in a controlled manner. Otherwise, you're just going to end up filled with arrows like a pincushion. So, I'm confident now that I can put this roof on without being overwhelmed by the mobs. Now, my track record with these mob farms says that I'm wrong. We'll see. The roof is halfway done, that means the reactivity of the mob farm is at 50%, and I am confident that I have the ability to operate this mob farm without any incidents. It does have a fence surrounding it after all. Huh. Well, would you look at that? 
I know for a fact it is possible to make a mob farm without making a big mess everywhere, but I've just never accomplished it. Maybe I never will. Oh well. Time to figure out how to fill up this hole while being attacked by things that make more holes, and eh, hopefully I can get above the curve and not have a giant mess out in the middle of nowhere. I'd really like it if I didn't have to rip the roof off that I just put on. I think I'm getting ahead of it. I'm taking control. Yep, definitely taking control of the situation. In order to make it look like it never even happened, I'll need dirt. I don't really have a lot of dirt, nor do I want to make a big underground dirt mine while I still don't have torches, so I'm just going to bury random blocks in the middle of nowhere. Hopefully no one will notice. Eventually I'll go in there and fill in that creeper hole too. With the placing of these final blocks, the mob farm is now at 100% reactivity, and hopefully no spiders or mobs or anything get stuck inside. I want them to just all fall down below. Some of them will die from the falling damage, and I won't be able to hit them with my sword to increase the possible looting percentage, but that's fine. Eventually, when I get enough iron, I'll add water, and this mob farm will be at full capacity. Yeah, look at that. It's already working. Because the zombies have just so much of a higher distance for scanning for enemies, they're actually leaving the mob farm while the skeletons stay inside. Plus, the skeletons want to be in the shade, so they don't want to come out to fight me. But they do fire the occasional arrow, so I will have to make something to keep me safe and prevent me from getting damaged. It would also help if I didn't need to run up to close the gate, but I'll figure all this out in a minute. Because this farm operates by dumping mobs on the ground, similar to how they naturally spawn, I might as well build a bunker nearby. This way I can just open up the gates and have the damage go away from the farm, so I never have to actually disassemble it to shut off the stream. This way I can just retreat inside the bunker if things get too hairy. On my first test of this prototype mob filter, I was kind of happy because all I had to do was back off to make certain I didn't pick up any creepers. But, me being me, I do have a tendency of getting too close and letting the creepers walk up anyway. I also noticed there was a zombie chicken jockey. I tried to not harm the chicken, but no second chicken spawned, so it didn't matter. If two zombie chicken zo jockeys spawn, you have the ability to breed them. They'll never lay eggs, so you gotta breed them quickly. The chicken that they make, the baby chick, will be a natural spawning chicken and you can go ahead and get eggs from it and make your own chicken farm. That's what I was hoping for, but it just didn't pan out this episode. Maybe next time. I changed up the old filter design as soon as I realized it wasn't offering me any actual protection from creepers blowing up prematurely. See, the problem is, is that the skeletons shoot the creepers, which causes them to explode. I don't really have a good way of stopping that because I need line of sight in order to get the zombies to walk out into the sunlight. So what I've been doing is just letting the creepers walk up, trying to side them, that way there's no line of sight between me, a skeleton, and a creeper, and they hopefully don't get shot. Then I just carefully pick apart the mob and I try my best to not attract the attention of creepers, only the attention of zombies. It's a long, painstaking process, but hopefully it will end in me getting some iron. An unintended consequence of the design of my farm is that in order to get things like arrows and string, and things that are from mobs dying by hitting the ground, I have to rely on zombies to be able to pick them up and bring them out to me. Which is interesting. They're bringing me the fuel that I need to make the mob farm more efficient, that being arrows especially. Of course, the risk of me picking them up is a little bit too much. I have a really bad habit of getting way too close to the mob farm. At some point, a creeper was one shootable, and that allowed it to die by a skeleton producing a music disc. I tried to grab that music disc with this fishing rod, even managed to inch it closer a few times, but it was an old music disc that had been sitting on the ground for a while and the interaction of the bobber didn't reset its despawn rate, so I didn't manage to get it. 
but I tried. I definitely tried. I've been operating this mob farm non-stop for days now. Minecraft days, not real world days. Real world days would be about hours, but either way, I was just starting to lose hope that I even could produce iron. Maybe some kind of setting was wrong when, there we go, my first iron bar. It took me a while, and I had to do it a gigantic project, but it was worth it. My first piece of iron in this world. I'll have to get six more just to produce a cauldron, and then three more just to produce a bucket, and I'll have to wait on rain. Hopefully I can get some glass bottles, but the possibility of adding water to this farm is going to make it a lot more efficient. Of course, I go ahead and I unlock all the possible crafting recipes with the uh, iron nuggets that I have, because why not? At some point while I was grinding, I got a second iron bar some various witches items, and an iron sword that's too damaged to actually use, but it is of smite, so it could help. But with those achievements, I think we're going to go ahead and call this video to its natural end. I don't see any reason to just sit here until I absolutely get an iron bucket and an iron cauldron. We can do that in the next video, and the next video will hopefully have a new block for us to play with. Now what item or block will that be? That'll be up to you. Go ahead and leave your comment for what you want to see in the next video in the comments down below. And definitely don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because it helps me with my eternal war against the YouTube algorithmo. And with that, I think I'm going to be saying bye-bye.